All right, so good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Wanted to make another uh, quick video here on the Royals while I'm uh, on my lunch break here, sitting in my car in the parking lot. Um, on my last video I made, I was a little animated uh, with the roster construction <laughs> of the Royals. And when I made that video, the Royals were 2-10. and 10. They are now 7-16. and 16. So I've gone five and six in the eleven games since I've made a video, which is probably about what they should do for most of the year: play a game under five hundred baseball. You know, seventy-eight to eighty-two wins is kind of in the ballpark of where I thought they would be. Actually, I, I initially predicted eighty-three wins, and that was with Salvi. That was before Salvi's injury, so. I mean, you can't look at the war stat and say, okay, well, Salvi was only worth one and a half war, so the Royals, that's, that means they're only going to lose one more game because of Salvi. You have to look at the absolute awfulness of Martin Maldonado and know that he's going to cost the Royals some games because it's April 23rd, and Maldonado, not only does he not have a home run yet, and he's got power, okay? Don't don't let him fool you. He does have power. He's, he's a double-digit home run guy in the past, not only does he not have a home run, he doesn't even have an RBI. And that's part of the reason because he's hits at the bottom of the order and nobody at the bottom of the order is doing anything to get on base, let alone get hits. And so 11 games have passed since my tirade on the roster. Uh, there hasn't really been any moves made. They've made a couple minor things here and there in the bullpen, but nothing, nothing too major. The good things that have happened over this stretch, uh, the Royals have played competitive baseball. They're not getting blown out. They are playing competitive baseball. They're they're in every game. They're just losing them, a lot of them. And they were in every single game in the Yankees series except for one. Nah, I take that back. They, there was two games they got blown out in the Yankees series. That's right. But, you know, last night they lost to Tampa 6-3. to three. The Royals hit three home runs again. Dozier and Solaire go. They hit home runs in the same game. It's like it's like it's in their contract or something. And Gordon goes deep again. And Gordon is on pace. Now, granted, it, I, I I don't I'm not a big fan of those uh, those projections and on pace for, especially you know, after like three games of the season, um, you know. But we are 23 games in. The Royals are seven and 16. Is that 23? Yeah, it's 23 games. They're 23 games in, and Alex Gordon is actually, he's on pace for career highs and everything. Now, if, if does that, is that going to hold up? Is he going to have near 1,000 OPS for the whole season? I don't know. Probably not. But we have a large enough sample size from the last two months of the year in 2018 to the first month of this year so far, you know, in 23 games. To, we've got a large enough sample size to see, you know, Maybe there's a difference now, and there's been a lot of talk about how Alex Gordon has made a mechanical adjustment at the plate, and he looks really good. Now, the larger question is, well, what happens after this season? I mean, the Royals are, I still have some hope that some of this pitching will get, will settle down a little bit, and the Royals will stop, will will pull their heads out of their butts and uh, actually develop a roster and a lineup that can compete. Because, honestly, the Royals have won seven games. And they've been in a lot of games, but they've been in a lot of games because Merrifield, Mondesi, um, Gordon, and Dozier have really, really hit well to start the season off. And I know Mondesi's kind of trailed off the last three or four games, but st- they've all hit really well to start the season. And... Eventually, those guys are going to hit some skids. They're going to hit some slumps. The other, the other guys in the lineup have to start producing, and if they don't, it's going to be a really long season. And so, what happens now? I think I, when I when I say what happens now is what is what do the Royals do with Alex Gordon? You know, after this season, the Royals aren't going to go to the playoffs, obviously. And um, Gordon has publicly stated that he is considering retiring. Um, he's still pretty young. Was he 35? I think he's 35. He's five years younger than me and I'm, I'm 40. 
or he's 34, maybe he's, he's turning 35, or maybe he just turned 35. Um, I know from like a school standpoint, he is five years younger than me. And I think it's about the same as for the age. Um, so what is, what do the Royals do with Alex Gordon? Um, especially as the deadline, the trade deadline approaches. Now, Alex Gordon is a 10 and five player, which means that, um, so if you're not familiar with that term, a 10 and five player is if you have 10 years of major league service and five of the, the last four five seasons of that is continuous with one team, you can void any trade. You have a, you essentially have a no trade clause in your contract. That's stipulated by the players union and you can't be traded to anywhere without your consent. So it's not like the Royals could just say, well, we're going to trade Alex Gordon, you know, to the Phillies who are in contention, which I have another thing on that. I want to get to in a second, but um, it's not like they can just trade him to the Phillies and then he up and retires. I mean, part of it is protection on the other team, but it's also a protective player too. And Alex Gordon has deserved the right to kind of to dictate where he wants to spend the rest of his playing time. Now, obviously, if he wants to continue playing after this season, there ha- the Royals have to be willing to to sign him to probably a, I would say probably to a two year contract. It would I wouldn't. I would de- seriously doubt they would go to a one-year contract with Gordon, and I, th- I think three years might be too much. But I wouldn't be surprised to see them do a two-year contract. And it would have to be significantly less than what he's making now. He, they're, they're just not going to invest a ton of money into, for next season, a 36-year-old outfielder. But it wouldn't be a bad thing, especially because what do the Royals have behind him? Right now, the Royals center fielder is Billy Hamilton, who... You know, when it when I said it looked like he probably blew out his knee, you know, my last video, is I, I was making that statement because of what I, what I saw on the replay and then he, the fact that he got carted off the field, which you get carted off the field because of a knee injury. That's never a good sign. But it turned out everything was fine, and he came back about three or four games later. Uh, but still, a Billy Hamilton is a, is a stopgap. I, I think he's on a one-year deal as well. Maybe he's on a two-year deal. But he's the center fielder. The Royals really don't have a right fielder right now. They have Solaire. Bonifacio and Phillips are still in the minors. So who else is there? There's, you know, Elio Hernandez is uh, is hitting decently in Omaha right now. He's 24. Uh, he's a can- He's been in the Royals organization for like eight years. The Royals got him when he was like 16 years old. He, when I saw he was 24, when I say only 24, I, you know, I, because he'd been in the, the program so long or in the system so long, I just assumed he was like almost approaching 30, but no, the Royals got him at, at a very, very young age and looks like he might be starting to develop. He's not on the 40 man roster, but again, that doesn't mean a whole lot. They, if, if he's ready to come up, they will make moves. Bubba Starling, obviously also 25, 26 years old is hitting well in Omaha. Also not on the 40 man roster. Do the Royals think he's a solution in the outfield? I mean, I think if they thought that he'd be in the, on the team right now because the Royals need all the help they can get. And the fact that Terrence Gore is still on the roster doesn't, doesn't you know, give a lot of credence uh, to the fact that they think anything above a Starlin anymore, which is odd considering they gave him a major league contract in the offseason, you know, when no one picked him up in the Rule 5 draft. So, uh, I don't know. I I don't know if the Royal, with the exception of going out, you know, and signing some free agent next year, I think the Royals are going to have to bring back Alex Gordon, which I'd be fine with. I, I mean, Alex Gordon is one of the top five players in Royals history. And if he has a good season this year, why wouldn't you bring him back unless he wants to retire? Now, if he demands too much money, then the Royals have to walk away from it. They just they can't they can't afford to uh, hamstring their their payroll on a thirty six year old player. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, I, I'm honestly I'm at the point now in this season. I'm wondering if the Royals are just waiting for that May that whatever date. In May that uh, they can call players up. It doesn't affect like a, a year of service time, whatever date that is. Um, 
I'm wondering if that's what they're waiting for for some of these guys to call him up. Because, now, Kelvin Gutierrez is another in, really interesting candidate. Um, now, granted, he's a uh, he's an infielder. He's third baseman. He could probably, I think he's athletic enough to play short, but the Royals don't need a third baseman or a shortstop or a second baseman or a first baseman, honestly. Um, but Gutierrez is hitting well in Omaha. But the, there's really no place to play him right now unless you think he can play in the outfield. <laughs> the biggest problem that the Royals have right now is their over-reliance on Chris Owings. And, and, and I, which is a weird thing to say that's their biggest problem because the bullpen is absolutely atrocious. But Chris Owings and, and Lucas Duda for that matter, but more, more specifically Chris Owings, he's a, he's a nice player to have on your bench who can play multiple positions and maybe give a guy a day off, you know, once a week, maybe he can pinch run late in the inning, late in games, you know, in the late innings. I, I I don't have the numbers in front of me. Again, this is off the cuff. That's the name of my channel here. I, I want to say he's got, he started probably 21 of the 23 games, um, just off the top of my head, that that number sounds right to me. And if it's not right, it's probably pretty close. Chris Owens is, is getting exposed because he's just not a very good baseball player anymore. And he never really was a great baseball player. When when they signed him, I was actually very vocal, you know, on social media and with uh, a lot of my coworkers too. Some of them really liked the signing. I did not. I didn't see what he added to this to this team, and I he adds nothing. He adds adds absolutely nothing. But we'll see what happens with uh, with him going forward. Uh, Danny Duffy is scheduled to make a start on Friday against the Angels. So. I, I'm, I'm assuming that means Heath Fillmeyer is the odd man out, which is fine. Hillmeyer, Fillmeyer has, he's been hit pretty hard, um, last couple of outings and he's been inconsistent. I, I like his stuff. I like his makeup, but you know, ultimately this is a results business. And if you don't have the results, um, you're not going to get the business. So, um, I, I imagine he will be sent down and back to the minors, and uh, Duffy will be put in the starting rotation. I would like to see Duffy in the bullpen, honestly, once the Royals figure out their starting rotation, uh, mainly because I think Duffy works better long-term now. He's never been consistent as a starter. He's had flashes of absolute brilliance, and then he's had some really head-scratcher moments. Um, I mean, look what they've done to Kennedy. Now, Kennedy is a highly, highly, highly overpaid relief pitcher because they've paid for him as a starter. But they've got to get something out of him, and he's pitching very well. He's the best pitcher the Royals have right now in their bullpen. And um, uh, him and Scott Barlow. Barlow has been good. Uh, Jake Newberry has pitched pretty well as well. So there's three guys that the Royals have actually that are having some decent results. Right now, the Royals need more than now is besides getting some of those consistent results in pitching, is they need to get guys on base. The Royals scored three runs last night. They hit three home runs. They had three solo home runs. Gordon, Solaire, and Dozier. Dozier is up to six. Solaire's got what? Or Dozier up to seven. I think Solaire hit his eighth. Gordon hit his fifth or sixth. So they're hitting some home runs. They've got some power. Just nobody's on base in front of them. And that's a, that's a problem. The Royals, the Royals need to get some more guys on base. And that's why I'm a huge proponent of shaking up this lineup, getting and getting rid of some of this dead weight. I very vocal that you know Owings, Duda, Gore, none of these guys should be on the team, and should all be sent packing. But again, Dayton Moore, I think he's going to wait it out at the very least until that magical day in May, and, and maybe we'll see some changes then. Um, the Royals are competitive enough that a couple changes, and you never know what could happen. I mean, no one's running away with the Central. I'm not saying the Royals are going to compete or that they could win the division or anything like that, but, man, I've seen crazier things happen. I mean, their offense is better than it was in 2014 when the Royals went to the World Series. So, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Anyway, i got to get back into work. What time is it here? Oh, I can't even tell because of this was recording, but I'm sure it's getting pretty close. Um, we'll make another video after this weekend, after after Duffy's start, and after uh, 
a, f a few more games, and after I see Avengers Endgame a couple times, so excited for that. Anyway, have a nice day.